Hello everyone and welcome to the Digimon Ghost Game review video. This time I'm going to be going over the latest episode of Digimon Ghost Game, which is episode 56, Impurities, but I'm also going to be talking about the recently revealed roster for the upcoming Jellymon BE Memory Dim Card. So I'll be going over that at the end of this video, so if you don't want spoilers for Jellymon's Megaform or any of the Digimon that are appearing on this BE Memory, you can skip out in the last little bit of this video, but in any case, this week's episode is definitely something to talk about. It was probably my favourite episode of the series so far. I really enjoyed a lot of aspects of it. So what we have this week is an almost nightmarish scenario where characters are just walking around saying things like they're impure or they're dirty and just washing their face or washing any surfaces that they come by that are dirty, anything that's slightly impure, or even if it's not, they think it's dirty, they start to clean it. And this is because there's a Digimon called Kazuamon, who is the, interestingly enough, the dark version of Renamon's megaform, Sukuyamon. So I say interestingly enough because we have had Yokomon, which is the purple Ker uh, Kirbymon, that's not a Digimon, uh, I can't remember her name. Kirbymon. They're very close to Kirbymon. <laughs> so we have we have the uh, purple version of Talmon, which is Dolmon, and now we have the purple version of Sukuyamon being Kazuamon. So while we have these dark Digimon, it is interesting to also remember that whenever we have a Ghoulus Gamamon showing up episode, we also have a dark Digimon watching on being kind of shifty. So we've had Graumon, Galgomon, and Agumon, two of which are also from Digimon Tamers, like we have the purple version of Sukuyamon. So whether or not that's just a coincidence or something to read into, whatever. But I'm kind of hoping that I'm not reading too far into this. We do have Kazuamon kind of hint that she might have been sent by someone so it could relate to these dark Digimon who have been appearing in previous episodes. So that's kind of interesting. So the Mon of the Week is basically taking these humans and is counting every single not 100% perfect thing that they've ever done in their life and counting them and then trying to remove these impurities. The beautiful part in this episode is the fact that when removing these impurities, they basically just become these boring wooden dolls, which is this kind of like, it's kind of like hammering in this metaphor, but it's, it is a kid's show, so I don't mind them doing that, for the fact that if you remove all the imperfections and all the flaws from a person, they're not that person anymore. They're kind of just a shell of that person. They're a boring wooden doll. They're not anything spectacular. And the fact that they turn into these wooden dolls that are used by artists when they're drawing something also makes it feel like they're just like a structure, a shell of a human rather than that actual human themselves. So it feels kind of meaningful that they're just saying, hey, having imperfections is fine, doing like minor things that may just be inconveniences, not necessarily bad things, but things that just Maybe, maybe some people might say are imperfections or flaws, like when you were six years old, you didn't return that book to the library, went on time, and that's something that was one of Ruli's imperfections. And these characters obviously are just humans, so they've had like over 100,000 times that they've done these things, which fairly minor, and everyone would basically have the same or similar number because we're not all perfect. And that was kind of a great moral for this episode to have. So all the characters basically one by one get picked up and Kazuamon is able to recite basically all of their impurities to them, which are fairly minor things. Hiro then gets picked up and Gamamon, who was Canon Weissmon at the time, says that it's basically the impurities that make us who we are and he loves his friends and he's, he is who he is because of his friends and their imp impurities or the imp imperfections. And then this causes him to evolve to his mega form, Cirrusmon, who is somebody I had a feeling that we would be seeing sometime soon, specifically because in this month's Psycho Jump that came out at the start of the month, we had a promo card for Cirrusmon. So I kind of expected that between like the start of this month and the start of the next month, we would have Cirrusmon debut. 
Also, in addition to this, next month's issue of Psycho Jump, so January 4th, I think it's coming out, we also have promo cards of Jellymon and Angoramon's Mega Forms as well. So, one would expect that we're getting into the getting a Mega Form arc. So, that would maybe mean that between now and next month at some point, we should have more Mega Forms. So, that's pretty exciting. I do love an Evolution episode. In terms of this episode, it was just so great. The animation was great. The fact that I didn't really know who the Mon of the Week was until she was revealed is kind of cool. I was like, who, who is that? Who could it be? And for most of the time, she's just kind of like this chanting orb. We see her basically as something that resembles the uh, the twelfth angel from Neon Genesis Evangelion, just this, just this orb that's hanging out. And the, the chanting that's coming from it is kind of creepy and has some great, like, spooky themes and ominous themes to it. The animation in this episode is also just spectacular, even more so than previous episodes that I've praised the animation on. The animation in this episode was just phenomenal. There was amazing use of shadows in this episode. The introduction part of the episode was just incredibly spooky, and not to mention the fact it just felt like a nightmare with all the characters kind of walking around being a little bit uncanny valley. It just, it was a great touch across the board, and I really do appreciate the way that this ominous sort of background and this ambience that this episode had, and the, the way that they used this creepy nature to the way that the characters were acting, really just, it, it just felt chef's kiss. It felt perfect to me. And this episode just did everything fantastically. It also was a great use of time. By throwing the characters in straight away into the problem, they kind of get to avoid the investigation or the introduction of the the problem of the week at the start of the episode. While we do have characters individually investigate the Mon of the Week, so we have Hero and Ruli both independently try to investigate what's going on, the episode itself feels like it flows really well. I love how we are separating them, but they're both investigating the same thing because they've had various friends affected and impacted by this Mon of the Week. So, big fan of that. I felt like that was really well done to have them separate, but also together working towards the same goal. Big fan of that. This episode was just really good, and my previous favourite, I believe, was episode 13, which was almost a year ago, and this episode definitely, definitely de dethroned it from being my favourite. It just just did itself really well. Beautiful use of time. The fact that Kazuamon was kind of impressed by the fact that they were able to evolve and says, hey, you know, I must be wrong, you must be right, because you were able to evolve and deflect all my attacks really well, so you've impressed me, so I have conceded, I'll see you again, a bye. And the funniest part of this episode was the fact that Jellymon at the very end says, hey, wasn't she nice to remove everyone's memories? That was just a funny moment that probably didn't, wasn't intended to be funny, but ended up being funny because it's such like a hand wave of just like, oh, all these people probably have some trauma, but we're just going to make them forget about it. It's something that we should have seen in that episode with the Weedmon coming out of people's phones because no one's mentioned that. But we also haven't mentioned that anyone's had any memory removal. So that's kind of fun. So this episode was great. I do love an evolution episode. They're not always perfect. I wasn't a big fan of the Canon Weissmon evolution episode because it felt like it was meant to be a Ruli episode but ended up not being. But this episode was a good and balanced episode in terms of focusing on the characters it was just good. Uh, there's not much else to say about than that. Just it was a good episode. I enjoyed it, and it's really restoring my faith in Ghost Game. We've had a few episodes where I wasn't too much of a big fan of them. I felt like it was getting a little bit stale and a little bit the same. But this episode really set it out as what all episodes of Ghost Game should be. Last week's episode was also good, but this week was much better. We should have more episodes like this week, like last week, for the rest of the show. Just Chef's Kiss. And again, I'm, I can't imagine the show ending anytime soon. Maybe maybe at least 10 more episodes left. 10, 20 maybe. Uh, looking at how many evolutions we have to introduce and how Ghost Game seems to at least like to space out the evolutions. We don't just have one evolution after another, which I'm also a fan of that. I don't like when we're like, oh, we're, we're just in the evolution arc, so you expect an evolution every episode. 
Ghost Game to not like that. So I'm kind of looking forward to it. And now that we've gone over this week's episode, I'm going to go over the Jellymon B memory card, which is coming out in mid-February, about a month after the Angoramon B memory card. Interesting that we're having them separate, not together like we did for the Dim, but in any case, let's look at this roster because there's something in particular that I'm really interested by in, in this roster. So let's look at it. So of course we've got the pink star to denote what mons have previously been on other dim cards or BE memories. So of course we've got jelly mons evolutions up to perfect. So Thetis mon and we've had a few other Digimon that have been popping up before like Warisidramon, like Majiramon over down there in the Adventure Route unlocks. But we also have some new Digimon. So we have Amphimon, who is the Megaform. Again, big fan of this. I'm a huge fan of the fact that it doesn't look overly sexual. Like, Thetismon is kind of like a good mix of monster and, you know, a booby anime lady. But Amphimon doesn't look like that's the same case. Looks like it's wearing one of those really old diving outfits, so that's kind of cool. I do like that design. I've mentioned that before, that, that that seems like a really good design. I'm looking forward to when it debuts. We also have a Kodokugamon, which I'm getting better at pronouncing, I guess. So that's the child version of Dokugamon. Of course, that Digimon being from a Jellymon and Kiyoshiro episode. We also have Shamblemon, so the Mushroommon adult level then we have a Digimon that I actually had to ask around because I wasn't sure what it was based, based by the silhouette, but it is uh, King Kakumon from the fighting game episode. Then we have Majiramon, previously was on one of the Tamers Dims, and this was from Jellymon's debut episode. We have Tropimon, again, from a Thetismon episode. Also very happy to see Tropimon, probably one of my favourites. And then we have what looks to be Marine Angelmon, but I don't think is... You'll notice that Marine Angelmon has been on a BE memory before, and this Digimon does not have a star next to it. The sprite itself, and Wikimon on Twitter posted a great comparison from this sprite and the Marine Angelmon, and they're slightly different, the arms are a little bit longer. So I'm wondering if this is actually the last version of Marine Angelmon that appeared on the Digimon XL that being the virtual pet that had all these blast forms for the Digimon that were on it to show that they were, like, powered up. So I'm wondering if we're going to have that Digimon pop up in the anime at some point, or if we're giving more attention to the blast evolutions, which I don't know how to feel about that because I've had, like, a, a, like a rough script on a video of a video that I want to cover about these blast evolutions for a bit, so I should probably get on that if that is the case. We also have Giga Seedramon, very excited to see that Digimon probably is my favourite Seedramon evolution. And we've got some good choices of Digimon. We've got Ikakumon, Zudamon, Vikemon, which I guess we're not getting a Gomon dim, but this is the closest thing we'll have to it. We've got a bunch of the Shell Numamons and Platinum Numamons. Not so exciting to see that, but I guess we do need the Bad Care evolution. We've got um, Scorpiomon, which is not Scorpiomon, but it's... I can never remember exactly how to say the, the uh, its actual name because it's based on an actual thing and I'm bad at pronouncing it. But we've got the X-antibody of that. And uh, yeah, so a bunch of Digimon that are very exciting to see. I'm looking forward to Amphimon's debut in the anime. But uh, yeah, super exciting. I love both the Angoramon and the Jellymon BE memory rosters, but I think I might actually prefer the Jellymon roster coming out. I, just because Giga Seedramon is really cool, and also the fact we've got Tropiamon, that's great, love Tropiamon, but also the fact that we might be getting, like, Blast Mode Marine Angemon, so that's really exciting too. So a bunch of cool Digimon that are popping up on this B memory. I'm excited. I hope y'all are excited too. If you're wondering where you can buy this, you can get this from all the normal places. This video is not sponsored by anywhere, but I just thought I'd mention a few places just to help you out because people will ask anyway, and you know what, I'm going to say where to buy them and people are still going to ask, hey, where can I buy this? So Zen and TCG, Hobby Link Japan, Japan you want, or you can use a proxy service to buy them from a Japanese website. So from Japan, buy ye, White Rabbit, and you just, if you just Google proxy service, you'll probably find one. But those are three that I've used, so I can vouch for them. 
probably in Japan, Japan you want Zen and TCG, are all websites that I have used in the past and I can recommend them. Hobby Link Japan is probably the one I've been using the longest. I've been using them for about a decade. I think they're also the ones that have been around the longest out of these websites. Zen and TCG being fairly new. Japan you want only really popping up in the last five or so years, I'm fairly certain. But Hobby Link Japan has been around for decades. I'm fairly, at least one decade. I feel like I may have heard about it 15 years ago as well. But then again, I wasn't really buying things online as much 15 years ago that I have been in the last like decade or so. But in any case, those are my thoughts about this week's episode. And also, we get a new BE memory coming out in the next few months. Of course, we also had news about Digimon Con popping up. I was almost ready to say that there's no Digimon Con for next year. I actually said it a few days ago on Discord. Hey, I don't think there's going to be a Digimon Con this year. But uh, lo and behold, it got announced just like two days after I said that. So, okay, that's probably the fastest I've ever been proven wrong before. So I'm glad I didn't go out and say it on a video. Uh, so there's a Digimon Con in February next year. I'll be probably covering it to the same extent as I did last year. I Again, I was fairly spot on with my predictions for Digimon Con. I was fairly certain that they weren't actually going to announce that much stuff, that it was just to go over um, things they've already announced or products that were already available or and, you know, things that you could actually buy or things that were coming out, like the Zero Two movie, like the, the Survive, which didn't really get much information, and then it came out a few months later. So, of course, we'll probably have information about the upcoming Digimon Story game that they mentioned at this year's Digimon Con. So that's exciting, but again, tamper your expectations. I know a lot of people were fairly disappointed by Digimon Con because they expected it to be full of announcements. Uh, it, it did announce some things. I still maintain that the Vital Bracelet portion of it was the best, even though the raid itself was really laggy because it had literally everyone trying to play at once. That that was something I kind of predicted anyway. But uh, yes, yeah, so exciting times ahead for Digimon Con. I might, may or may not do a prediction video like I did last year, but again, I'm not predicting too much because I don't think there'll be that many announcements. It's probably at the similar amount that there were at this year's Digimon Con. Probably uh, if they do announce anything, it's going to be more B memories, maybe more Digimon Colors, because one, in February the Digimon Colors are going to be coming out in the next month or two, so they'll probably be talking about that quite a bit in terms of new toys in the anime portion, uh, mainly the Zero Two movie, but I guess I'll, yeah, I'll get to that closer to the date if I do do a prediction video. So in any case, those are my thoughts for this week's episode and of course the Jellymon BE memory. So let me know your thoughts below in the comments and like this video if you are like, excited for the BE as well because I am very excited for the BE, especially this roster, especially the possibility of Blast Marine Angemon. So in any case, subscribe if you haven't already. I'm still trying to get to 13,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so please subscribe if you haven't already and tell your friends, tell your family, tell your pets that use YouTube to subscribe to my channel. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!